Good day to all of you. Welcome to EC Physics. Learn physics as easy as one, two, three. Through this video, we are going to discuss about electric flux and introduction to Gauss theorem, which is meant for students of class 12. Before we start, what is electric flux and Gauss theorem? We need to memorize some mathematical tools, which we have already studied, obviously. But let us refresh our mind. Cos 0 is 1. Cos 90 value is 0. Cos 180 is minus 1. Surface area or spherical objects are 4 pi r square. And we have studied about scalar product of two vectors. Vector a dot vector b equal to a b cos theta, where theta will be the angle between a and b. One more thing to be studied new is about area vector. In maths, we have studied different formulas to find out area of different shapes. But area is a vector quantity. Vector means in addition to magnitude, it will be having a direction also. So let's see how to find out direction of area. If you have a surface, which is having a total surface area S, let us consider a small area segment DS. For that, the direction of area will be always, let it be of any shape, direction of area vector will be perpendicular to the surface directed outwards. This will be the shape, sorry, this will be the direction of area vector. So area vector of the small segment can be written as vector ds equal to ds into n cap, where ds is the magnitude of area and n cap is the direction of area. Now we are ready to start studying what is electric flux. Electric flux, the physical significance, the physical meaning of electric flux is, it is the total number of electric lines of force that normally pass through a given area. We have discussed about electric lines of force and its properties in one of our previous videos. Those who did not watch it, please do visit my channel and watch the video on electric lines of force. So here, I'm considering an arbitrary shape, a closed um, surface. Arbitrary shape means it could be take up any other shape. It could be spherical, it could be cylindrical, it could be cubical, any closed surface. The flux can be calculated by finding the number of lines of force passing through that given area. In order to find out the value of electric flux quantitatively, we can use a mathematical formula. See here we are considering a small area segment ds, which is parallel to the electric field. See area segment will be always having the direction perpendicular to the surface. If we consider another segment, its direction is going to be different because it is going to be perpendicular to that particular surface, right? So which will be making an angle theta. Here the angle made by ds and e is going to be 90 degree. Here I'm showing an example where angle between ds and e is 180 degree. So everywhere the electric flux can be calculated by taking the scalar product of the vectors electric field and area. Scalar product of vectors, finding the magnitude can be done this way, E, D, S, cos theta. Clear? This is the small amount of flux which is coming out from the small area segment. If you want to find out the total flux, obviously we can do the integration. That is phi will be equal to integral E dot ds, which will be integral E, D, S, cos theta, where E and cos theta are constants, can be taken outside. And when you do integration of ds, you will get the total surface area s, right? So E s cos theta, this is the mathematical formula for electric flux. From the mathematical formula, we can find out the SI unit of electric flux. As we know, electric field unit, one unit is Newton per coulomb into area is meter square. So you will be getting one of the unit of flux is Newton meter square per coulomb. Another unit of electric flux is volt per meter into meter square. Volt is nothing but joule per coulomb, right? So you can write joule per coulomb meter into meter square. So one meter and one meter will get cancelled. So unit of electric flux will become joule meter per coulomb. It is obviously scalar product of two vectors, which means electric flux will be a scalar quantity. As I told you, the unit will be Newton meter square per coulomb or joule meter per coulomb. These are the topics to be understood about electric flux, the definition, the significance, 
the mathematical formula, whether it is scalar or vector, and its SI unit. Now we are ready to study the most important theorem in electrostatics, which is nothing but Gauss theorem. The statement of Gauss theorem goes like this. It is the total charge into one by epsilon zero will be equal to the surface integral of electric field intensity over any closed hypothetical surface. These closed surfaces, we will be giving the name Gaussian surface. So the surface integral of electric field over any closed hypothetical surface in free space will be equal to one by epsilon zero times the net charge enclosed within the surface. This is a statement of Gauss theorem. It should be studied as it is in the proper words. Mathematical formula can be written from the statement itself, surface integral of electric field means you can write integral vector E dot ds equal to one by epsilon zero times the total charge enclosed. If there are n number of charges enclosed in the surface, then we can write sigma i equal to one to n qi. This is Gauss theorem. Now we need to study proof of Gauss theorem. We can prove Gauss theorem by taking a spherically symmetric surface. Imagine that the surface encloses a charge plus Q. Let us consider a small area segment DS. Direction of DS will be perpendicular and directed outwards. Since the charge enclosed is positive charge, the direction of electric field will be away from positive charge, which means this way. As you can see here, now angle between E and DS is going to be zero, right? Proof of Gauss theorem means we need to start with the LHS of Gauss theorem. What is LHS of Gauss theorem? Integral E dot DS, right? Integral E dot DS will be equal to electric field due to points are the equation will be one by four pi epsilon zero Q by R square into unit vector R into vector DS means DS into unit vector, right? So here, r cap dot n will be equal to cos zero because the directions of r cap and n cap are same, right? So you can write cos zero as one. So d phi will be equal to one by four pi epsilon zero q ds divided by r square. To find out the total electric flux, you can do the integration. Integral of d phi will be equal to integral one by four pi epsilon zero q by r square can be taken outside as com constant integral of ds. Integral of ds is nothing but s. s means total area. This shape is what? A spherical shape, right? So total surface area will be equal to what? 4 pi r square. When you substitute that, you will get 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q by r square into surface integral ds is 4 pi r square. So this 4 pi and 4 pi gets cancelled. r square and r square gets cancelled. You will get phi e, that is integral of d phi will be equal to q by epsilon zero, which is nothing but the statement of Gauss theorem, right? The surface integral of electric field over any closed surface will be equal to q by epsilon zero. Hope this topic is very clear to all of you. In today's topic, we discussed about what is electric flux, its significance, mathematical formula, SI unit, statement of Gauss theorem and its proof by taking a spherically symmetrical surface. Hope this topic is very, very clear to all of you. And Gauss theorem, you will know by now, then as easy as one, two, three, right? Thank you for watching. Have a great day to all of you.